I'm Tom Murray. I'm the director of the Volcano, USGS Volcano Science Center, and thus I'm the line manager for all five U.S. volcano observatories. I will provide a little background on how USGS approaches reducing the risk to the nation from volcanic activity and also then the importance of the updated threat assessment that's just come out. The USGS Volcano Science Center, or the VSC, has the responsibility to provide timely warnings of hazardous volcanic activity in the United States. To accomplish our warning and hazard mitigation mission, we conduct geophysical monitoring, hazard assessment, fundamental research, and provide information and education to help communities at risk prepare for volcanic activity. We do this through our five volcano observatories, and they are the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, or HVO, is our oldest observatory, located on the Big Island and was founded in 1912. Um, I think most of you know that it has had an extremely busy and eventful year responding to the eruption at Kilauea Summit and Lower East Rift Zone um, this spring. Um, HVO is responsible for Hawaiian volcanoes. There's the Cascades Volcano Observatory, or CVO, located in Vancouver, Washington. It was founded after the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens and is responsible for volcanoes in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. The USGS California Volcano Observatory, or CALVIO, is located in Menlo Park, California and was founded in 2012 and is responsible for volcanoes in California and Nevada. The Alaska Volcano Observatory, or AVO, is located in Anchorage and Fairbanks, Alaska, and it was founded in 1988. It is responsible for volcanoes in Alaska and also the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. The um, volcanoes are located north of Saipan. And finally, there's the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, or YVO, which was founded in 2001. It focuses on Yellowstone, but is also responsible for volcanoes in Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, and Arizona. Um, and as Leslie said, we have representatives online from each of the observatories here to answer questions about the updated threat assessment specific to their area of responsibility. I want to thank the authors of the updated threat assessment. It's an important document for us. Research over the past decade has increased substantially our understanding of many of our U.S. volcanoes, and in several cases, this is affecting the level of threat posed in the, uh, as posed in the original 2005 report. Also, societal changes such as population and installed infrastructure have changed the threat at some of the volcanoes. This is important because the threat assessment is used by us to help guide and prioritize our risk mitigation efforts at U.S. volcanoes through volcano research, our hazard assessments, emergency planning and preparation with our partners, and monitoring efforts with federal, state, and local governments. This prioritization of risk mitigation efforts is a cornerstone in the development of the National Volcano Early Warning System, or NVUS. Because of the breadth of volcanic activity across the U.S., ranging from the lava flows, such as seen recently in Hawaii, where a vent might open just down the street from your house, as it did last May, to the main threat being to aircraft flying at speeds of over 500 miles per hour, 30,000 feet above the volcano, such as this is the case in the Aleutians, we need a way to prioritize where our resources should be going by looking at the threat posed by the volcano rather than simply the hazard we have a way to judge the appropriateness of our efforts across all the U.S. volcanoes, whether it is to fill gaps in our monitoring or gaps in knowledge of the eruptive history of the volcano. Thus, the importance to our work of an updated national threat assessment. Uh, finally, the National Volcano Early Warning System, or NVIS, is a USGS program under development since 2005 to create monitoring infrastructure at U.S. volcanoes at levels commensurate with the threats posed by the individual volcano, underlining the importance of this threat update, and systematically address reducing risk from volcanic activity. Under NVUs, the USGS strives to establish common best practices and uniform systems for monitoring volcanoes and responding to eruptions, which in turn enables all the assets of the USGS to assist a single observatory in a response to a major eruption such as which occurred just this last spring in Hawaii. Thank you.
Good afternoon. My name is John Ewart. I'm a volcanologist based at the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory in Vancouver, Washington. And I'm here to give you uh, just some introductory remarks uh, about the update to the USGS National Volcanic Threat Assessment that was published this week. This report is an update to the first National Volcanic Threat Assessment the USGS published in 2005. I just want to note at the outset here that the threat rankings are not an indication of which U.S. volcano will erupt next. Rather, the threat ranking is an indicator of the potential severity of impacts that could result from future eruptions at any of our given volcanoes. The United States has quite a few geologically active volcanoes. 161 are included in our threat assessment, and this represents about 10% of Earth's total number of geologically active volcanoes. The footprint of active volcanoes in uh, of active volcanoes in U.S. states and territories is large, extending from Arctic regions of Alaska to the tropics of American Samoa, south of the equator, and east from Colorado, uh, as far west as the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas in the Western Pacific. Within this footprint, a total of 14 U.S. states and territories have volcanoes considered by this threat assessment. The United States has uh, nearly every type of volcano, and as just described, these are found in wildly different geographic settings. And how much we know about the eruptive history of individual volcanoes varies greatly. Our threat assessment system looks at 24 factors related to the hazards and broad measures of risk to people, property, and infrastructure. The hazard and exposure factors we used are general enough to be easily applied to most or all volcanoes over the diverse geography, volcano types, and state of knowledge for our U.S. volcanoes. To be included in the assessment, a volcano had to meet certain criteria, the most important of which is being active in geologically recent time, a time period we refer to as the Holocene, which is about the past 12,000 years. A unique element of the USGS threat assessment is the inclusion of ash cloud threats to aviation in the assessment process. The inclusion of ash aviation factors in the original threat assessment from 2005 was a first at the time for this kind of analysis. The 2010 eruption of Ayafiatliukit volcano in Iceland, which caused a great deal of disruption and expense, is a good example of why it is important to consider aviation risk when prioritizing volcanoes for attention. In fact, if you take into account ash impacts to aviation, you may quickly realize that there are, are no remote volcanoes, and volcanoes that are geographically distant from you may affect you in ways you had not considered. A little bit on the numbers. Once the 24 factors were scored for each volcano, the volcanoes were grouped into five categories, very high, high, moderate, low, and very low threat. The application of the ranking system reinforces some of our current notions of which volcanoes are the most worrisome. While most of the very high and high threat volcanoes are well known, when we combine exposure and hazard scores, it highlights the number of volcanoes that, owing to location, would otherwise have been given lower priority for monitoring and other hazard mitigation uh, efforts. For instance, some geographically remote volcanoes in the Aleutian and Northern Mariana Islands scored highly in our assessment owing to their frequent explosive activity and the threat they pose to national and international air traffic. So the very high threat category, we have 18 volcanoes ranked as very high threat, and this group of 18 is unchanged from the original threat assessment in 2005. 11 of these 18 are found in Washington, Oregon, and California, five of them in Alaska, and two in Hawaii. Now, as in 2005, Kilauea ranked as the U.S. volcano with the highest threat score. Kilauea is the most active U.S. volcano. It erupts mainly lava flows, but is also capable of ex producing explosive eruptions, and there are highly developed and populated areas on its flanks. The eruptive activity in 2018 and the impacts we saw from that uh, to Hawaii are clear examples of why Kilauea is one of our very high threat volcanoes. Next, the high threat category, we have 39 volcanoes in this category. 30 of these are in Alaska. 
Notable changes in this category include the addition of Sultan Buttes, California, which did not appear in the original threat assessment, and Fort Peaked Volcano in Alaska, which was very poorly known prior to its first recorded eruptive activity in 2006. 49 volcanoes are ranked as moderate threat. Again, 30 of these are in Alaska. Notable changes to this category include the addition of Soda Lakes in Nevada and sub a shallow submarine system called East Diamante Volcano in the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas, neither of which appeared in the first assessment. 34 volcanoes are ranked as low threat. The three volcanoes in American Samoa, Tana Volcano in Alaska, and two submarine volcanoes in the Northern Marianas make their first appearance in the low threat category. And finally, 21 volcanoes are ranked as very low threat. Owing mainly to volcanoes being removed from this threat assessment on account of better knowledge about their eruptive histories, the very low threat category underwent the greatest changes. However, one volcano in New Mexico, Red Hill Quemado, and three submarine volcanoes in the Northern Marianas were added to this group. In summary, then, we assessed 161 volcanoes, eight less than in 2005, when we had 169 volcanoes listed. The net change in number reflects additions, subtractions, and naming changes to the list of volcanoes that result from unrest and eruption activity and ongoing research by the USGS and by our academic colleagues into the eruptive histories of U.S. volcanoes. And finally, uh, the U.S. Uh, National Volcanic Threat Assessment is used by the USGS to help guide and prioritize risk mitigation efforts at U.S. volcanoes through volcano research, hazard assessment, developing of monitoring infrastructure, and emergency planning and preparation with our federal, state, and local government partners. Personally, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the whether it's number one or number three. The important thing for us is that it's it's in that very high threat category. Um, when we when we add up the the scores and all the different factors, you know, different things come into play. Um, number of people, how frequently the volcano erupts, um, what the air traffic uh, airspace is like. So um, it. It's a, it's a number of different uh, factors. Again, there's 24 different things we look at, 15 hazard factors and nine exposure or broad risk factors. And um, they, you know, kind of the chips fall where they may. Um, Kilauea gets consistently high marks because it's the most active volcano we have in the U.S., and it's got a lot of development right on its flanks. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, of course, um, we don't have um, much in the way of development right on the flanks, but our volcanoes that are both explosive and covered with a lot of uh, snow and ice can project those hazards pretty far downstream as uh, debris flow of hard hazards and downwind as uh, as ashfall uh, hazards. So um, I would en I would encourage you and others to to look not at the sort of the one through N ranking, but just look at the, the broader categories and know that, um, you know, a, a, a small change in a single factor can, can result in a little bit of jockeying in position. And our next question comes from Seth Warnstein from the Associated Press. Your line is now open. Yes, thank you. To follow up on an earlier question that brought the Mount Shasta numbers, is there, if you look at just the population hazard in the the hazard zone for each each of the big 18, which has the highest population in the hazard zone? And I guess an or a second way of looking at it, if you could possibly do both of these, not only which volcano has the highest population in the hazard zone, but what is the biggest city in the United States or metro area or whatever you prefer that is in a volcano uh, in a very high hazard zone? I'll ask Angie Diefenbach to answer the question about population, and I think I can address the second part of your question, which was about uh, cities. Okay. Now, hi, this is Angie Diefenbach. I'm a, a volcanologist at the Cascade Volcano Observatory and a co-author on the report. Um, Mount Rainier sits as kind of the highest uh, 
number of people within the downstream hazard zones. About 300,000 people reside in those at-risk places and are at harm's way. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, and on, on the second part, um, you know, Angie said that um, the, the downstream hazard zones, that's certainly the, the biggest population, but I think it's important to realize, particularly for the Cascade volcanoes, which can produce far-traveled lahars, is that they can have an impact on an urban area without actually touching the urban area, and that's by uh, having a negative impact on power generation and transmission, on transportation routes, on uh, you know goods and services in and out of a of a city, so um, it's you know we don't we don't have uh, any of our U.S. cities actually sitting um, with well with the possible exception of Hilo uh, <laughs> on the Big Island, um, we don't really have uh, major cities that are that are quite close to our U.S. volcanoes except for Hilo. Yeah, um, it, Jim, do you want to chime in on on a Hawaii? Uh, sure. Uh, well, I can't speak about whether Hilo is the biggest city on a volcano, but Hilo definitely is located on the flanks of a low volcano, and it's been written probably a dozen times in the last uh, 1,500 years. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's right in uh, harm's way for the longer model of flows. Um, as development increases on the island of Hawaii, uh, more and more residential areas get closer and closer to uh, recently active volcano volcanic events. So, um, the while they're not cities, they're fairly dense. They can be fairly re dense residential areas, and that's a concern to us. And, and which volcano is Hilo near? I'm sorry. Mauna Loa. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I